Hola, gringas y gringos, and welcome to Gringos R Us. Expats with a plan. I'm Mark. I'm Gina. This week, I know we've been here a while, but it's our first impressions of Merida coming up after this. And welcome back. As Mark mentioned, we're going to give our first impressions of Merida. And yes, we have been in Merida a little longer. We got backed up about three to four weeks, I'd say. Well, four you or know. five weeks just because of illness there. And, and we really weren't sort of... backed up. That's actually a lie. It was the opposite of backing up. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of backing up occurring, but that's TMI, so we'll just keep going right on down the road. So. Yeah, so this, we, we try to do a first impressions video of our new location. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to stick to really our authentic first impressions. They really, I don't think they've really changed. Well, I think there's a few things that we have encountered that may have... I mean, from what we were here the first week, you know, um, the number one would be we didn't really notice the trash as much when we first got here. It took us walking around a little bit, and then all of a sudden we went, wow. Yeah, well, that's true. And then For some reason. And then, then we went to the Mercado, and we really went, Wow. Yeah, I, I don't really know what it is. Now, if you watched our last video, uh, one of the things that I did mention in it was that Merida has this nickname called the White City, Ciudad Blanca. And uh, there's a lot of explanations for what that really means. Uh, I have heard that it has something to do with the limestone that the buildings are made of. Could it uh, be? heard it's got to do with the white waterproofing that's put on a lot of the roofs. Could be. Uh, I have heard it's because it's a clean city. Can't be. That can't be. I've also heard, and I tend to believe this more, authentically and historically, it was called the White City because there were these gates or arches that were installed with a walled city to delineate between Mayan parts of town and the white colonial center of town. Thus, the white city. The European the section European section of Central. Of yeah. But and, I mean, and that may be or not be, but what I don't think it is, is I don't think it's got anything to do with the clean city. No, because if that's the case, San Luis Potosí ought to be the white city because that was yeah. so far, by far, the cleanest city that we have been in. But this it's, is about Merida. Yeah, and, and, and overall, it's not horribly dirty. Mm -mm. It's just, there's... It's shocking. What, what it is is, it's not trash garbage. It's littering. Yeah, that, that's, that's very effective. I think it's littering. It's not like it's just, oh, there's just rancid garbage all over the streets and nobody ever clean. No, no. Littering. Like, you could walk past someone's house, and if there's a recessed window, yeah. guarantee you will find somebody's corn cobs, empty bottles, empty cans, or whatever other mm -hmm. trash they didn't want to take home with them is sitting inside somebody's windowsill. Yeah, that's... That and, kind of thing. And that's quite frequent, and mm -hmm. then it gets knocked to the street or something, and then when it rains, then it ends up under our car. And, if, I mean, and if you've seen, we do get a lot of rain because we're in a low point, and when the buses and everything go by, it pushes it in waves, and literally we have to clean up trash under our car behind the gate inside the house property. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And... We saw the woman across the street whose family used to own this place um, years ago. She was going up and down the street cleaning up trash. Yeah. I mean, you know. I mean it's, it, they're, when you walk in the Hardines, the Hardines are clean. Mm -hmm. um, this occurs normally in the more lived-in parts of town and in parts of town 
where there probably tends to be more foot traffic is is what and no garbage cans yeah i mean yeah. it's the, the number of, of garbage cans that you see in la plaza del centro you know are a lot more than what you see on you know three or four streets away right. and and so you know as disney learned you know you can only go so many steps and then people will just get tired of yeah. carrying their trash so yeah. i yeah. think that has a huge impact um in it probably does it does it deter from our overall impression of the city no 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 because again it's not like you're in a garbage dump no it's not like it smells bad it's not like there's a bunch of dogs running around on the streets tearing garbage bags apart it's not like that no it's just litter yeah yeah it's litter so and, and speaking of dogs the la ermita in san sebastian area more cats than dogs not too many street dogs nope lots of cats lots and of cats some of these cats have been around and been in a scuffle or two yep you one know, of them's missing an ear <laughs> but that's just yeah. you know that's part of this of the quaintness of this neighborhood yeah the neighborhood itself um very quiet and, and with with the notice noticeable exception being Calle 66 is on the route to the hospital mm -hmm. and three or four times a day you will hear uh, an ambulance going by with the sirens and the lights but on. But it's background noise. Yeah. Like who would have thought that we would get used to noise like that? It's a busy street, constant traffic. Mm -hmm. We have an intersection where people honk horns at each other fairly frequently because it's hard to see around the corner you can't it really see, yeah, is you can't see around the corner and one street has the right away and the other one doesn't so but we've never heard a crash nope um heard a couple of screeches, screeches. As, as they slammed the brakes on but no 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 right? metal on metal yet first week we were here um it was the feria two or three blocks down the street so there were fireworks on a regular basis. There yep. were parades on a regular basis. Um, none of it was disruptive. No. Not at all. In fact, I actually enjoy seeing those things. Yeah, I mean, it, it's an active, both San Sebastian and La Ermita mm -hmm. are very active. Um, one of you actually made the comment that, that it was it was a proud neighborhood and i would say that is a very accurate description for sure um it's a very friendly neighborhood um you know again as we have found almost through every place we've been in mexico mm -hmm. the people are the difference makers and yeah the other thing is is with that occurring in all the places in Mexico, it's going to be difficult to choose because you're not going to be able to differentiate so far. So, so far, far. So far, yeah. Um, you know, people from city A to city B to city C to city D, there really hasn't been a noticeable difference in attitude towards us. No, no. Um, as you get closer to Central, there's a lot more tourism going on. Uh, yeah. We notice that there are um, people out there that are trying to lure you into places. Yeah. Maybe for with good intentions, maybe not. Uh, but they're no overall. I mean, no. I mean, overall, there's it, it's a touristy location. There's, yeah, you're, there's you're, something good going on all the time. Something interesting and fun. I, I would say this is the one place where we have been hawked more times for tours and things like that and to be fair we are in the middle yeah of all these different eco, you know ecological sites and and mm -hmm. archaeological sites mm -hmm. and there's so much to do that you know the tour people are out there and you can see the office after office after office yeah. right around centro yeah. 
and they're trying, they're competing for the same amount of, you know, tourism sure. money. So sure. you, you do encounter that, but not anywhere near as aggressive as what we have encountered at like La Quinta in, in mm -hmm. PDC. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's yeah. been, it's been, no, you know, tolerable. Yeah. It's re and, and reasonable. No. And, that, and now that I know that it's polite to just say, Gracias, when you're not interested, works fine. Every time. And you keep walking. And you keep walking. Yeah. Um, but see, uh, things that I noticed, um, people are very friendly, mm -hmm. very helpful, mm -hmm. um, willing to assist when they can. A lot of English spoken here. Uh, and that doesn't surprise me because in many parts of the Yucatan, and it's not unusual for children to learn Mayan first at home, and then in school they learn Spanish, and they learn English. And they're also continuing in their Mayan. Right. Yes. I mean, but I mean, maybe closer in the city like Merida, that's not totally true. It's probably more realistic to say something like that if you were further out and maybe via yeah, or something it, like that. Yeah, but in Quintana Roo, we know that that's, you know, they... Yeah. They are um, trilingual. Trilingual. Yes. So in their in their schooling. So um, shopping wise, anything that you oh, need is here. It's here. And yeah. if it's not here, it's on Amazon. And Amazon will deliver to the door. Oh, um, we found that out. And the only thing is is for some reason I'm noticing here in Merida, Amazon doesn't think about consolidating the shipments and so if you've got like four different things you ordered and they come in at four different times you will get four different visits yep but hey I mean I'm not complaining it comes quickly and they're very cautious and uh, they'll send you like a passcode sometimes for the more expensive items mm -hmm. that you must show mm -hmm. the delivery person just so they can verify that you got it and they will not leave things at your door no like they do in the United States no porch pirates going on no. here and, and, so. and so far we have been to Costco, Home Depot, Walmart, Shadrui, Went the to mall. the Galleria. Um, yeah. And not, that doesn't include the little bodega right down the street and the, and the six tienda across the yeah, street. Yeah, that was just like in the first week or two. Like when we first got here, we knew we were going to be here for a solid three months. We hit the Costco. Yep. And we picked up some things that we knew we would use for the entire three months. Yeah. Um, and some of it we overbought, but that's just, a little you know, bit. because you can only buy in so big. I mean, we're right. going to have toilet paper that's... Yeah, we'll have toilet paper for a while. That's okay. Yeah. I um, mean, at, at least it's not COVID and we're not going to be accused of having no, too I, much toilet paper. I understand. Paper. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anything that really realistically that you need is here. Um, there are several mercados, um, you know, and from where we're at, it was oh, not, it was not, it was about a 15 minute, 20 minute walk total. Just for that one. And then the biggest mercado in all of Merida was like a block and a half away from the one we went to and we didn't know, No. but we will eventually make our way there. So we didn't really know that. So yeah, we've been to a big mercado. Mm -hmm. There's another mercado that I just learned it's just not too far past San yeah. Sebastian. We got to go down and try that. No, we've been... There's food carts everywhere. Well, it's food carts everywhere. everywhere. We, we walked to the FedEx place and when and that was only about five and a half blocks away. Yep. And on that route is also the audio Adele bus, bus yeah. terminal is right there. We've walked downtown in Centro and gone right by the regular bus terminal several mm -hmm. times. Like a city bus, I think. Not only the city bus, the out-of-town bus, because we've seen people oh, getting off with suitcases okay. and things sure. like that that have been walking around. The airport's close by. Can airport is close by. We've picked two different uh, sets of friends up at the airport. Both of them have raved about the quality of the, airport, the airport as far as how simplistic it is to get in get I out mean, we went to the galleria basically we went up there just to get honestly to get haircuts i know that sounds terrible that we did it at the mall and we could have gone anywhere around here but 
We really didn't know where to go yet, and we really didn't know how difficult it might be to explain what we wanted done, particularly me. I fixed this. You know, say. he's easy, but I, you know, I'm like, oh, I want an inverted bob, and I want it longer in the front, and I want to have bangs. It's really hard to do all that. So yeah, we went up to the mall to get haircuts. Yeah, numero uno para toda la cabeza. I mean, he's so easy. But then we noticed there's an ice rink in the mall. Mm-hmm. How cool is that? Yep. And got we bought shoes. I bought shoes yes, there. Yes, that's right. Went to the Skechers store, and and fortunately the young man spoke enough English, and that's a little bit of a. Uh, iffy situation it, it helped that i was buying sketchers because it had both the u.s and the mexican mm -hmm. size in the shoes mm -hmm. so that made it a little bit easier to to go yeah that's my size um mexican shoe sizes are in centimeters mm -hmm. and they will often drop the, the first first digit. digit so if you wear a 28 you will get, you can say eight, and they know that it's 28 in adults anyway. Well, you better say ocho. If you say eight, they're going to think it's well, a USA. You know what I mean. Yeah, but, you know. But I actually thought ahead. I remember when, I think it was Brighton did a video mm -hmm. on shoe sizes, and Brighton and I are not too far apart in shoe sizes because I have really big feet. And um, I wrote it down on my phone, so I knew. Yeah. Um, Weather wise, we hit here, I think at the end of the rain, just about the end of the rainy season. I know some, you know, some of you no, are going to go. I think it's still well. Going we just seen video footage. Of, oh, I thought that was the beginning of the rainy season. No, I. I think well, it was the end of summer, which yes. we did not realize. Summer really starts in Merida around May. Well, we didn't know that, and we wanted to be here during the hottest time for a really good evaluation. We ended up being here right at the end of it. Yeah, but. I mean, we, we hit El Tejar during the heat of the season, and yeah. then by all the lid, and it has been rather pleasant here. But then, you know, we're so used to, to, to thinking yeah. of what it was like in the U.S. Yeah that the summer is, you know, the hot part, you know, July, August, right. and, and that's it. Well, the sun's going overhead a lot sooner down here. So the heat actually is about a month and a half earlier. Yeah, kind of like how the days are shorter. And I, we but just, they're more consistent. We I didn't mean, anticipate they're, that. They're shorter in the summer but they're a lot longer in the, the winter. winter. Right, I you was know. thinking we were gonna have nine o'clock you know, dusk like we would have in the United States, but I, no. no, 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 it's dark by seven, sometimes six. <laughs> you know, but, but quite honestly, um, having it be more consistent, mm -hmm. it, it really is something that you start to just sort of adapt to. You fall um, into the pattern. Yeah, you know, I mean, because yeah. it gets early, it, it gets late here starting about 5.15, 5.30. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, so. So speaking of which, so we've been to a lot of places so far in Mexico, not as many as some people, but enough to notice that early breakfast is not a thing in Mexico. Yeah. Um, Excuse me, it is here. It is here. This is the first place that I think we have really noticed it. That this is an early rising town. People are up. Yep. People are up at 6.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning on the streets. Yep. I know the Jardin down by uh, La Romita. Yep. It, they have coffee stands at 6 a.m. down there. I'm like, what? I'm not used to that. It's, I don't know if it's just city life. I don't know what it is, but I mean, just today, and this, I know this isn't a, an immediate first, res, you know, first impression. We noticed people were up earlier. That is a first impression. Yeah. Today, 
Yesterday. yesterday. Yesterday confirmed it for us because we were up at 6.30 driving around and places were open for yep. breakfast. And there were a lot of people on the street yeah. already at the bus stops waiting and it was, there was traffic. I mean, there literally was traffic on the roads at that hour. And speaking of roads, mm. we have driven so far, we've made a couple of good, good multi hour trips, mm. you know, driving around Progresso, um, Sasol, and then uh, Ushmal and, and around. So I will say that the roads in the state of Yucatan are some of the best that we have encountered in all of Mexico. They are. And I'm not talking about just the toll roads. I'm talking about, you know. I mean, and okay, yeah, they're bumpy in town, in places. Oh. Some places are, are like a, a French cobblestone, some places mm -hmm. are brick, some places are just blacktop that's been patched, sometimes just patched by people in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So things can get a little bumpy, right? But overall, mm -hmm. so what about food in this area? Well, oh. we know, we know, Cochinita Pabil is hard to beat. I can live on that stuff. That, that stuff is the bomb. So well, that, that's way up high. Um, I got to try Sopa de Lima. It's good that I tried it again. Actually, three times. Three times. Marquesitas, very delicious. Um, I've tried at least three different varieties so far. Actually, we, four. Yeah, we, we have to give this shout out now. Yes. Speaking of food, there is a restaurant that we have, we found, then we recommended some people who were down here visiting that we met up with later that evening. We mm -hmm. recommended they go there mm -hmm. when we went there. And then two times we have taken people there and it is called Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And it is... Would you say maybe one block from Centro? Block and a half, Block and a almost half. two. Yeah, because it's getting down towards the second on uh, 63rd Street. But our first, our first time in Centro when we were looking for something to eat, it had good ratings. Yes. And when we walked to it, when we walked in, it was packed. And you gotta go up the stairs and you're sort of going off. Full hey, what are we of locals. You know the food is good if the locals are packing the place. And they were packing it, laughing, yeah. having fun. Yeah. The wait staff there is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, their English is on par with my Spanish, yeah. um, but we've never wanted for food, beverage, nope. um, full bar. And we've walked out of there dinner for four with tip 800 pesos. And that includes some drinks. That's good stuff. I mean, it's hard to go wrong there. So See, anybody things, coming to Merida? So Marquesitas, I've tried several types so mm -hmm. far. He has not. Um, we did see churros once. Yeah, but I'm not big on cheese. And, and Marquesitas, yeah, the big thing is the, the cheese. cheese but, and that's just. But churros, you even passed on the churro, the one that. Um, well, he yeah. Really did. Because that was during the five week period oh, where yeah. the stomach was going. No, oh, yeah. No and you're churro going, for you. Yeah, you want a churro? Oh, my stomach's down there going, mm. uh, no. no. Yeah. Um, okay, so I have also tried the regional dish, um, sabutes and pan, pan, panuchos. Pan, panuchos? Pan, panuchos, right? I think so. I think so. I think I'm saying it right. I think it's panuchos. But, they're very similar. One's got beans, one doesn't. Um, and in fact, San Sebastian is supposedly the place where the panucho was created or originated. Tried both, delicious. A um, couple times I've tried those. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I would say, so let's see, first impressions, let's see. Traffic is not horrible. No, no, we've never really encountered um, a lot of lot, Issue, lot, yeah, lot no. of traffic. No conveniences are plentiful. Mm -hmm. If you've got a car and you drive north 
anything you want is up there mm -hmm. in shopping. Or, or west. Or west. I mean, because the, the, there's this, the Costco and the galleries, oh, yeah. that's all west yeah. of here, so. Um, and there's another one north, and the, I mean, they're, the, trust me, you're not going to have to travel far to find a place no. to shop. And there is so much to see here. There is a lot to see here that won't cost you anything except maybe a tip if you want to give it. And we haven't even had enough time to even begin to see everything there is to see. So, uh, um, and even with some of the stuff to see, one of the things is, is they are very receptive to giving discounts to residents. Yeah. And it's, it's a pretty, hefty it's like 50 percent yeah it's about, about half about half price um what we noticed is, and we knew this when we were in valladolid uh see there is a federal fee uh, i can't think of what the name inh is. inh the mm -hmm. federal fee for archaeological sites for example is is like a standard like yep. 90 peso fee and that is a separate fee and a separate ticket and then in the yucatan for some reason yucatan's got some steep prices for their archaeological um, locations. Well, it goes back to the tourism part of it. I sure. mean, that's just, sure. it is what it is. But that's where the discount comes if you're a resident. Yeah. Because if you are a Mexican resident, they will give you like a 50% discount. And if you are a Yucatan resident you with it. a local ID that yeah. says that you live here in the Yucatan, it goes even further. It's, it's like a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was like, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was so, happy with the 50% off. I right. was like, okay. And some places, um, I believe this would just be for residents only or Yucatans only. Some places will let you in free on a Sunday. Yeah. I noticed that too. But, so there's lots to do. If you've got a car, you have got numerous opportunities to go see a cenote, to go to all sorts of various archaeological locations that you probably never even knew existed. Um, there's not a lot of Pueblo Magicos around here, but there are a few. And, and they're not long drives to get to. No, but you have all the archaeological sites yeah. and, and all of that. The museums. Um, there's museums. We, we are, I don't know if we're going to even have time no. to get to all the museums. And, and the other thing about Merida is everybody goes, okay, it gets rated as the safest city in Mexico. I would agree. And there is, well, we haven't really felt uncomfortable anywhere, but we're comfortable to the point here where one of us walking is not really uncomfortable because mm -mm. we've never even felt anything close. No. No. And when there is crime, I mean, we learned this the very first week we were here because it pretty much happened twice that somebody, I mean, that's the type of crime that would, you would have, robbery or burglary, that kind of thing. Um, and it happened twice in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And both times the police came to us because they saw that there was a camera on the house. Yep. But the camera's at the garage. So, um, of course, we would put them in touch with the people who run the Airbnb so they could discuss whether there was anything they could use from the camera. But the point is, aside from that... I mean, it's... it's yeah. People watch, people watch out for each other here. Oh, I noticed that. Yeah, right I away. mean, right our away. neighbor across the street... Mm -hmm. Gina went to go fly the drone the other day, mm -hmm. and oh, I didn't say that out loud. Um, and we were waiting on Fed. Uh, FedEx was coming at the same time, and so I was inside here, sort of waiting for FedEx to show up. And she didn't take the keys; she sort of just left the the garage door. And it's and it's morning. It's not even noon yet. Because, because it was uh, bicycle time. Right. They shut down a street so people can ride the bikes. And that's until noon. So. And, and the wind was blowing and it sort of blew the garage door the other direction open. Oh, and out into the street? Yeah. And, oh. and so uh, I'm in here and all of a sudden I keep hearing, hola, 
hola, hola, <laughs> and, and it's our neighbor across the street, and, uh -huh. you know, and, and she's like, banditos, you know, and so, you know, we put the door back the way it's supposed to be, and then came back in here and was going, oh God, please don't let FedEx show up while I was out there, because yeah. they, they have a habit of sort of going, <laughs> gone, so, yeah. um, and then of course they didn't show up, and she got back, and Okay, can, let me talk about that real quick too. This is the way people deliver things here. Um, of course, they come to the door door, not the garage door, makes sense. And they don't knock. Um, if there's a doorbell, they don't try to ring it. They just holler. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they just holler at you. Yep. <laughs> and hopefully you hear them. Um, sometimes they will send a message on the phone saying, you know, that they're here. But so far, I mean, I missed, I missed one person one time, but um, that's how things get delivered. They just holler at the door. Yep. Uh, what else? The rain. The rain has been a surprise. Um, we're in a low point. Yeah. And we don't know if it's just the drains need cleaned out or what. I think and we actually saw them one day out there cleaning yeah. the drains. But um, yeah. on a whole, I mean, it's filled the pool back up. Yep. So, uh, I mean, you know, when and, and it when rains. it does rain, I think the worst we ever had, it was maybe an hour, hour and a half max. Most of the time, mm -hmm. it is 20 to 30 minutes and it's gone. Or less. Or less. Yeah. Okay, so I guess to wrap it up for first impressions. Well, aside from the trash, which I do find to be a little bit annoying with the littering and all, it's not a deal breaker. No. I like, it's got low traffic, low crime, major easy to get to conveniences. I, I think it's pretty high up there. Well, you know, major airport that's very simple to use, mm -hmm. good health facilities mm -hmm. and, and everything else. And I think that's gonna make it real difficult for other cities close around here to overcome. I'm, not that it can't be done. I mean, because Progresso is not that far down the road. I mean, when we went to Progresso, it was what, 30 minutes, 35 yeah. minutes. Um, but like Campeche, you'd have to come back here. Now the Maya train could change that. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I, I am going to say right now, it so far it's ranking pretty high. It's up there. It's up there in like the top three. So far, but we'll know more mm -hmm. by the end of this day. Uh, Which is about to be here. No, I mean, I can see why people like it here. Oh yeah. I can definitely for sure. see. For sure, I understand. Mm -hmm. Despite the heat and everything else. The attraction is, is easy mm -hmm. to go, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. I agree. So that is our first impressions of Merida. Hope that you enjoyed watching that. We do appreciate you spending some time with us. Mm -hmm. And as always, we are Gringos R Us. Expats with a plan. Remember, we, we are, are doing, doing it. it. You, you can, can too. too. There's some other videos you might want to check out. Hasta la próxima. Adios.